getting some final things all set up here. Hello, everybody. I'm Ken Napsock, and welcome to the Positivity Report for a Monday, June. Is it June already? Holy crap, <laughs> it is. We got a special guest coming in studio in just a moment. We got Mark Riley at the bar, Ikaika Shively pressing the ones, twos, seven, eights, and nines. Something he's going to teach me even more this week because he's going to be on vacation at the end of the week, and I've got to run the show. Ikaika, uh, what is, what's your faith level in me for running the rest of the week, uh, Thursday through Friday? 10. 10 out of 100. That's great. That's great. No? 10 out of 10? That's a lot of faith, man. That's good. That's I believe good. in you. But thank you. Kaika Shively, believe in me. Where's Josh McCuga? Where is he right now? Let me tell you, Josh McCuga is somewhere probably on the 20 freeway, maybe the 10, somewhere in Texas, stuck in El Paso at a Whataburger drive-in. He's going to try to check in later in the show. He's, of course, doing the meatball run with his uh, good friend Nick. Uh, we've been uh, prepping for this, so I'm here today and tomorrow. Tomorrow i got a great show with special guest Phil Svitek, uh, but today we're going to have a special guest in the studio that uh, y- you all know about. But before we do that, I bring it back a segment we did back uh, when Josh was out on paternity leave. It's a little thing we call the morning musing. <laughs> All right, everybody, here's my morning musing for today. Here's the thought I had. Uh, there's a stain on my driveway. It's a bad stain. It's oil all the way to the soil at this point. I don't know if I'm ever going to get it out. The problem was I got a car about a year or two years ago, and there was a leak in it. It was a used car, 20 years old, that's expected, I guess. But the leak was slow, the leak was steady, and I figured... Having that repaired might cost a bit much because my mechanic told me as such. He said, "This is you might as well just get a new car at this point. So I put it off. Uh, but eventually I knew I couldn't avoid it. I couldn't avoid the problem. And I had a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. I cleared credit cards. I got some kind of loan consolidation debt, mostly just to repair my car. That's how much I figured this was going to happen. But as, as I was waiting to do this, as I was stressed and filled with anxiety about dealing with this problem, the oil leak just got bigger, wider, and deeper. And now it will never go away. And finally, last week, I bit the bullet. I, I, I put some whiskey in my coffee. I got up early, and I went to my mechanic. And I said, let's do this. Let's finish the leak. And he said, okay. He called me a couple hours later and said, I found the problem. I tightened a hose. That's $40. I think the lesson here is when you have a problem, it's easy to just run away. It's easy to let that leak slowly drip, 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 instead of just facing the problem. Oh, yeah, it could have been a couple thousand dollars, but in this case, it was two $20 bills. I paid with cash, which is something I haven't really done in the last year and a half. So even then, we're moving forward. That, my friends, is the thought. Don't let that drip slowly. Stay in your life. Just my morning musing for the day. All right, my friends. Uh, we got a very special guest in the studio. He's a friend of the show. He's been on uh, our streams before here, but he's uh, in a person right now. Uh, back on June 12th, 2016, hard to believe so long ago, the Pulse nightclub shooting rocked the nation, and I hope it rocked you in a in a powerful way. It's something that uh, should affect us all, affected us all, should have affected us all. 49 souls taken that night. And after that, after that af- aftermath, uh, our guest today, Uh, did something about it. He put together this wonderful anthology of stories called Love is Love. I believe now at least five printings or more. Uh, This, of course, helped uh, raise funds and awareness for what happened, and it's something also we're going to continue to to do here. Uh, He worked with the One Orlando Fund on this uh, this project, uh, but also today, uh, we're from now until end of June, we're going to announce that uh, Good People Association will be uh, donating portions of our proceeds, like we always do, to the Trevor Project, uh, Saving Young LGBTQ Lives. You can go to thetrevorproject.org for more. I wanted to bring him in today just to catch up, just to chat and have some fun, but also look back and see uh, where we were, where we are, and where we need to be, and also to highlight this wonderful book. You can order it. You can go to your local comic shop. I always tell you, support your locals. Mine is Earth 2 in Northridge, California, where they do sell copies of this book. Please welcome to the Positive Report, my friend, Mark Andreco. Mark! 
How are you? I got to slide over and get in the shot. Well, we're both we're both vaccinated. Mm, yeah, so. we're both. Let's move a little close. And we've been casual lovers for years. So. <laughs> After you know, I was so intimidated by you early on because I just loved you. I just loved you. Vice versa, I was terrified of you. You were in the suit. You had the man bun. <laughs> Well, it wasn't even a man bun yet. It was a floppy, it was a floppy, floppy, stringy ponytail. It's a dark time in my life, Mark. Yeah, well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we're off to a great start, remember? So here's the story. There's a lot of people that actually don't know, and we'll get into the details. I definitely want to talk about this uh, great anthology and and, and uh, uh, things about that. But uh, Mark, of course, was uh, over at the uh, Movie Fight show I used to produce for a while. And I had not known who he was. I knew I knew his comics. I knew his works. He, he co-wrote a, and co-created a series called The Illegitimate. It's a great comic series. Taron Killam worked on it with you. And I was one of my favorites. I loved it. And I was like, and I know all of the other things he did. Wonder Woman, uh, Manhunter, other things. We, we can list your resume. But I was like, oh, a Draco. And then, you know, you're like me. You're kind of a lovable curmudge. Like, that's what we are. You have to prove that you're worth talking to. <laughs> That's exactly it. And that applies to me. That's just a general rule. Am I going to – I know within like 30 seconds if we're going to talk more than like passing hellos. Did I get past the 30-second mark? Yeah, of course. That's why I'm here. That's true. Mark doesn't wake up. I'm not getting up at 745 in the morning for anybody, buddy. (laughs) For my strong truck stop coffee I made you? (laughs) Yeah. I, I I would turn it, but it won't fall out. (laughs) <laughs> Look, we were out of the, we were out of coffee, so I had to run across the street to our uh, favorite Seven Eleven in the world. Purveyors of fine coffee beans from around the world. <laughs> they do. They don't take only the best beans, Mark, and they put them there. Uh, anything to uh, get you here. Um, I, I do want to talk about this. This is uh, it's crazy. Time has a, has a way of, of moving on, and, and that way we we just sometimes might forget some of the things that affect us and should affect us. Uh, the Pulse nightclub shooting, June twelfth, two thousand sixteen. I, I just can't believe. It's that long ago, uh, and that led to uh, Love is Love, uh, you finding some good out of the darkness. I just want to talk overall, five years now, wh- what do you look back and, and think of? Well, I think that we've had immense progress. I mean, there's been, uh, you, you, you look at the kids like the Parkland kids, from mm-hmm. that, that school shooting, and how, and M- Malala, and yeah. Greta, and all these kids that, that I want to live long enough to see them run the world because they're right. not taking any of this. Um, but in the same in the same way, we we have two or three mass shootings a day now. You know right. that's how I knew we were getting over COVID. There were five mass yeah. shootings, and I don't know what I don't know what our obsession with guns is. I don't know. You know, it seems like there should be basic rules, like if you're going to run for public office, you have to take a psych test and a citizenship test and <laughs> a basic literacy test. Maybe, yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's it, it's just fascinating to me this this obsession with guns because the people that 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 are the most fervent gun defenders, mm-hmm. like well, I want, well, if the government wants to attack me, I'll have my AK-47. We have drones. <laughs> yeah, we we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the old Simpsons joke. I want to keep the Queen of England coming out of my coming into my living room. And everybody in the world thinks that they're the star. They think they're above the title in the movie of life. And most of us are unpaid silent background. <laughs> and that's fine. But this idea is it's it's certainly a white person thing that our lives are so unsatisfying <laughs> that we have to create drama. Great drama. That is the height of privilege. Yeah. yeah. You know. And. Uh, but mm-hmm. but doing that, you know, it, yeah. it was it was. I grew up, you know, I I came of age in the age of AIDS. Right. So for me, this was sort of triggering in the event of the amount the um, amount of death that happened so quickly. Because when mm. I was 13 years old, back when the dinosaurs ruled the earth, back when yeah. you, you were 27 at the time. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, 30. Um, I said I had 30. Uh, you know, someone would sneeze and then two weeks later be dead. Right, right. And right. this this event, I remember a Friday night before this happened, I went to bed and there was a news flash that there was a shooting at a club. And I'm like, oh, there's a shooting at a club in America. It's a night in America. Right, right. And then I woke up the next morning, which coincided with Gay Pride Weekend in L.A., and right. I was just, yeah, it was just insane to me. It was absolutely insane to me because gay bars have traditionally been a place of refuge and a place of safety and a place of... And you look at it now. Where do, where do most women want to go for their bachelorette parties? Mm-hmm. Annoyingly, to gay bars. We love you, girls, but <laughs> we're not creatures at the zoo. Um, 
<laughs> can, I, can I ask? I want to talk about that. The, that was the the at. I mean, there's there's so many horrible forty nine lives lost, and that, but that was this little added kick that that I don't fully understand, but I can recognize. Uh, I I've uh, love a I love a good gay bar in a way, though I sometimes feel I even shouldn't be there. I was at Oil Can Harry's, mm-hmm. which which I, I don't sadly I don't think survived the pandemic. I think it'll probably come back. It's such a it's such a legendary place right. that I think it's it so might. Great. And I was there for a straight girl's birthday party mm-hmm. because. Every woman wants to go there because they know they're not going to be as assaulted, harassed. We can feed them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's a little bit of that. But I was there, and I, I remember watching. I was watching a guy dancing on stage, and I was smiling because he he was clearly in his late fifties, and he and he had a big the big bushy mustache. He was buff beyond belief, and he was in, in his cut off jean shorts just dancing. I just I remember looking at him, thinking, this guy went through the eighties. This guy went through a time where he probably wasn't allowed to be who he was. And this building is that spot where he can and probably has been for years. And to take that away from from him or anyone with this kind of specific shooting, it broke my heart again even more. Well, it's because, you know, like I said, especially because it was mostly people of color and Mm -hmm. because it was it was Latin. It was Latin night at the club. So, you know, it's it's it's. There's just so much complexity to to how sad the whole situation is and how awful mm-hmm. it is that these things keep happening in America. And my reaction was, you know, I grew up also in the age of We Are the World, yeah. where if you have a skill set that's in the arts, do something. Because this, the genesis of this book was never to win awards and be, you right. know, be a humanitarian and all that. It was my reaction. And you got of, to go on Seth Meyers' show. I mean, right? I mean, come on. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Seth called and said, hey. hey. I'm like, all right, Seth. Hey. Finally, I'll stop calling me. I'll do your show. Yeah. Which is completely not true. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I woke up that morning of, yeah. of Gay Pride and I was like, I just t- went on Facebook and said, let's do a, if anybody wants to do a charity comic book, I'll organize it. Yeah. And then Paul Dini and his wife mm-hmm. um, came over and said, hey, we're going to get you to the house. Let's go. Let's walk down to Gay Pride. And I haven't been to Gay Pride in a year, in years, yeah. just because that's a younger person's thing. Sure. And just getting a, up early. A, a, as you, as, much like you, I don't want to be around 400,000 really happy people. Um, so, and I, came, and, I, and I came back, I came back that afternoon after spending the day with them and just going to Gay Pride mm-hmm. in, the, in the shadow of this felt like an act of defiance and an act yeah. of like, you know. What what gay pride the genesis of it was originally, and I had like seventy five e- emails saying I'll do it I'll work on it I'll work and I was like oh crap I guess I'm doing a right. book, <laughs> and luckily I've been around long enough that you know I reached out to, uh, the then president of DC Comics Diane Nelson who's a mm-hmm. dear friend and Chris Ryle who was the publisher of uh, IDW and I said can we make this work yeah and it just fell into place it shouldn't be this will never happen again as mm-hmm. easy as this this went from an idea. To in bookstores in six months. It's crazy. With yeah. hundreds of creators yeah. and hundreds of companies, and 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 it's just it, if I if that's all I'm ever known for in my obituary, I'll I will die a happy man because mm-hmm. it really transformed my life at a really fundamental level that I didn't yeah. that I didn't expect. Yeah. No, the list, uh, you know, the list just goes on. Jonathan Hickman, Mike, Brian Michael Bendis, Mike Mark, Mike uh, Mark Bernardin, uh, a friend of. Uh, Friend of the show, just love in general, Mark. we love Mark. Paul Dini, Morgan Spurlock, uh, Judd Winnick from, uh, you know, he's done so many other things, but I still know him from Real World, too. Uh, uh, Judd, by the way, is a very successful children's book. Yeah, he went on to just his, wonderful He's career. got a series called Hilo um, about a little robot boy that's really fun. That's yeah. like on volume seven, I think, just came out, and it's spectacular. I've seen that in shop. Jason Aaron, uh, Mark Millar, so many people. And uh, in- introduction by Patty Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Some of you may have heard her, and uh, Star Wars fans are uh, looking forward to her work. And, so, and uh, Patty's introduction is great, because... Patty filmed Monster with Charlize Theron yeah. in Orlando, so she had actually been to Pulse. Yeah. So Patty's Patty's introduction is one of like defiance, and it's just wonderful. And the fact that I yeah. call her, the fact that I'm saying Patty, like we hang out, is like <laughs> the surreality of you living know, in Los Angeles. You know, old Pats. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and again, the book is love, love. Go to your shop. I always say you can order it, but go to your shop. If you got a local comic shop, not only support the businesses, but if you say, hey, can I get a copy of this, and they don't have it, they'll order them, and they'll order more than one, and more will be on the shelf. And that's not to help this man I- I- in terms of getting on Seth Meyers again, but to, to help the overall cause. I don't need is- any help with that. <laughs> God. That's, true. That's God. true. So much for the you, positivity report. You, you He's become a, so positively Hollywood. a jerk. You become Hollywood. <laughs> See, I always do. He's uh, a big deal. One other thing about the yeah. book is um, it debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah. We're on our eighth printing, I believe. Okay, eighth. There have yeah. been seven or eight international printings and with that used local artists and creators in France, Germany, and oh, Brazil, wow, wow, wow. Italy. Um, and we've raised 
combined, we're getting pretty close to almost half a million dollars. That's, so yeah, and, and yeah, and, and no no artist no no author took took pay. They it all it all went to it. Yeah, every everything was donated or or, or free. It was it was everyone came from a place of. Mm. How do we process this? Yeah, the world shouldn't be like this. How can we make this place better? And it was it was it was therapeutic in a lot of yeah. ways. And also too, having that book, if you give money to a charity, you can write the check, put it in the mailbox, and you're done. Right. But having this, you know, I still can't read this in one sitting. There's still there's yeah. still pieces in this that even thinking about them will just gut make you cry. And yeah. that's a good that's a good thing. Yeah. The moment we think about stuff like this and are just blasé about it is. Mm-hmm. When it why it keeps why it will keep happening and will never end. Yeah. So, and 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 there's no there's no gesture small enough to make the world a better place. That's what I learned from this. That's oh, that I was going to ask you what, uh, through the through this darkness and it's still dark and there's still 49 people not on this earth. But where yeah, what kind of inspirations can you still take from it and that and that's part of it. it it's crazy the amount of people that that have been affected by it and you when they tell you how deeply they were affected by it, you want to say thank you, but it's such a privilege, right, right. to to be able to do something like this and have it affect anyone in a positive way. I mean, I've had survivors, I've had family members who, mm. who lost people thank me, and I was like, no, yeah, no, 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 this, th- thank, thank you, because this is, this is something that, you know, it, it, it's a horribly tragic event, but out of tragedy comes right. good. You yeah. know, you can't have, you can't appreciate the good times unless you have bad times. I agree. We have, we have uh, our saying here, find the good, and, and, and that might mean just, uh, Finding the good in this horrible coffee I made, uh, or or finding the good in, in dark times, and which is not easy. It's never easy. And and when you were doing this, uh, putting together this book and getting all these names together, uh, were there were there moments where you felt uh, I, I just overwhelmed by this? I can't do this. And how did you push through? No, because yeah? I did, I didn't let myself think about it because coming from doing community theater and like let's put on a show. I knew the moment, the moment you, th- it's like riding a bike. The moment you think about riding a right. bike, the mechanics, you're going to fall off. You just have to ride the bike. Yeah. And I look back now and I think, who was the person that worked on this? Because I wouldn't work on this now if someone asked me to contribute to it. Because it's just yeah. the immensity of yeah. all, the, all the parts. But it's what's great about the comic com- community. It's what's great about the LGBT community. It's what's great about the nerd community. Yeah. There is, underneath all the, the, the toxicity and all that crazy stuff that happens, there's a, there's a deep concern mm-hmm. um, for each other and once again the the fact that this book has sold you know thousands and thousands tens of thousands of copies globally yeah is insane to me and it's a you know and it, it's 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 a small thing but it does memorialize these people that were just out you know going to have a good night have a night and have fun with their friends and just go dance and you know yeah. to be t- Feel struck safe. down in that is is really horrifying but I think that I think that at least this was a, a wake-up call for a lot of the gay community that there's still a lot of nasty people out there. And yeah. things are getting better, but things getting better mm. doesn't mean things are great. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, you know, I, This month be, being Pride Month, it's something that's grown in stature, at least from my... Well, there's money to be had. Ah, uh, yes. You know, <coughs> you switch your logo over, right? In a business... Here's your rainbow credit card. And I mean, it's yeah. great. That's not a complaint. But I was going to ask you about that. I was going to... Where it is now, what does it mean to you now, from where it was, from where you are now, and, and, and even the even the cynical stuff. Yeah. Well, I, well I'm, you know, I'm an old gay, so yeah. I kind of like to look across a crowded room and see someone who might also be gay, and it was a secret handshake sort of thing. Yeah. You know, which is, which is once again, the height of white privilege that, oh, I like being, I like being a secret spy. But the fact, the fact now that kids are, I mean, the, the difference between my growing up and yeah. kids today, when I was 14, 15, Rock Hudson came out of the closet because right. he was dying of AIDS. Now you have Lil Nas X, yeah. who I am admittedly late to the party on. Sure. I, had, I had not heard that song, uh, Old Town Road, until the day after he pre- <laughs> performed on Saturday Night Live because I just, I'm, you know, I like 78s and cranking yeah. like a Yeah, yeah. Um, but the fact that you have this out, aggressively out gay, queer, black, young yeah. man who has the number one song ever in the history of music, who's won country music awards, who's yeah. unapologetic, and I literally never thought I would live to see something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. once again, when I was a, little, a, a kid realizing he was gay in Ohio in the midst of the AIDS crisis, I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to die of that eventually. Cause mm. we, you know, you just assume because we didn't know back then. Yeah. And to see... How little we've changed and how immensely we've changed is amazing. People like him, you know, yeah. lots of these these young actors and actresses who are now, kids are so progressive about sexuality yeah, yeah. and orientation and that, that it's 
my high school, which I went to school in the Mentor, Ohio, which I call Stepford, mm -hmm. now has an LGBT alliance. Right. At the high school? If you had told me they had an outer space club and were in a satellite, I would believe that <laughs> beforehand. So there is so much progress. And basically, you know, the title is is almost, you know, an old trope at this point, but love yep. is love. You know, to, to paraphrase uh, Baz Luhrmann, uh, it, it, the only thing better than being loved is loving in return. Yeah. You know, and I want everyone to be loved and be happy. You know, as, as long as you're not hurting anybody and you're happy, yeah. great. Good for you. That's something we should all achieve. So to yeah. be threatened by people being in love reveals a deep flaw and a deep sadness that something happened in your past that I just, I'm not, I'm not, I want people happy. The happier they yeah. are, the easier life is for all of us. Uh, well said. Yeah, a reflective uh, mirror sometimes if you if you check yourself, if you have some of these issues. No, this is it's powerful stuff. But I, yeah, I think it's valuable because I, I think it's it's I think it's important to say it's gotten better, but it's important to realize that's not the end of the sentence and and the end of the story. And, and I love hearing your perspective. Again, it's, like you, said, you grew up in middle America. And, and I've talked to you about this, and I think we did an Abstract Files interview where maybe your coming out experience was uh, with your family was healthier, or if I remember some details. It wasn't, yeah, I mean, I didn't was, officially come out to my parents until Matthew Shepard's death. Right. Because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't dating anyone, so I wasn't lying about it. And it was, you know, right. when, Cher, when Cher's son Chaz came out, yeah. she was pissed. Yeah. So if Cher... Who, if sure. gay people didn't exist, Cher would have been giving you the coffee at 7 yeah. Eleven. If she got mad, what are my parents going to think? And of course, yeah. you know, my parents were like, you know, oh, you're gay, you're ha are you happy? Pass the salt. Fine. Right. You know, so I've never had the suicidal thoughts. I've never was kicked out of my house and any of that mm. sort of thing. So I try to couch my privilege and give back because I know how. You know, Matthew Shepard died for being open, and I was right. like, I just can't be that. I can't be that person anymore. I have to tell my parents. Mm. And. Mm. It's it's scary for everybody. Everybody can has, needs to come out on their own terms, their own timeline. But yeah. the world, the world, I think ultimately respects honesty and yeah. truth to yourself, regardless yeah, of what that right. is. And you know, if you live honestly, I might not agree with you, but I have to respect you because you're living a truth. To use all these Oprah isms, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, we're in this. <laughs> I've lived long enough to see in Draco quote Oprah. Where's the, Where's Yanla? Fix my life. <laughs> Fix my life. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a long-winded answer to a question I long forgot. So <laughs> no, no, this is no, this is great. I'm just talking about where we were and where we are and, and where we need to be. But I, I'm with you too. I mean we're 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 in that generation uh, that uh, we are. You know, Gen X was named after not caring. We just didn't care. And so I always I even make jokes. It's like I'll care more. I'll get more angry about someone writing a check at the grocery store than some of the bigger issues. And it's been. A lesson, a lesson in humility, a lesson in uh, checking where you are in your life to look around and look at the younger generations. And, and do I do I always agree with the everything? Not, I'm talking about issues, but they're, they're, they're sometimes really aggressive and they and I don't like ageism. <laughs> so I've, I've been aged out of things, um, but it's been inspiring to just be like they care. And maybe because previous generations just put their head down and that's that's why we got where we are. And it's nice to see uh, going forward that we might be in a better spot. I think ultimately we are. I think, mm -hmm. you know, once again, you can't have a renaissance unless you have a dark age. And we're just coming out of the dark ages 2.0. Yeah. You know, and and it, it's we 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 need the wake up call. I hope I hope the the, the years under the, the orange fascist and the past year of. Of being locked down, I yeah. hope. I hope it's not like nine eleven, where six months later everything's back to normal again. Yeah, because I think the most important thing people need to realize, and I tell myself this every morning: you need to contextualize things. Yeah, you need to put things in the context with wouldn't they happen? And empathy and sympathy are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Understanding why someone acts and and trying to yeah. figure out their reasoning for things is not endorsing that thing. Mm -hmm. And we. We've, you know, we've, we've made those definitions. We made those words mean the same thing, and they're yeah. not. Yeah. You know, empathy is an important, important thing because you might disagree with someone, but if you can explain to me why you feel a certain way, yeah. I can understand that. And that, that, there's nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. what the world should be. Yeah, no, you're speaking, you're speaking a, a truth there and a hard truth. And I think you talk about just the last year, but even the last four or five years for me, and I, I'm not a, a, a politics aside, which politics are morality to me, it's how you view the world, but I think even I've been changed in the last four or five years mm -hmm. where you have, if you even take one second to look outside and you don't take the extra second to look at other people and other people suffering, other people's point of views, uh, again, not even talking about issue by issue, but just human beings, 
uh, that's I've been forever changed. Well, it's, it's so complicated because, you know, as a former Catholic, I don't want to think about good things for myself because you're being arrogant. You know, and 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 celebrate. This is ce- why you and I celebrating think, good things in your life is not being braggy or yeah, gloating, yeah. and we need to we need to we need to first of all to myself relax. Yeah, yeah. take your own advice. You're not the star of this movie. <laughs> the Draco <laughs> movie is a good movie. And, though, and you know, it's it's just a matter of life is really 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 incredibly short. Yeah. And, you know, all those great old phrases like youth is wasted on the young. If I had half the brains at 20 that I do now, right. I, could, I could be Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the wasted stuff. And it's why this new, this new generation of this, mm. these kids just coming up and not giving a, a crap yeah. about it and just living their truth is just like, once again, I feel like I was raised in the Depression and I'm watching the moon landing. You're like, <laughs> wait a minute. Is this, what is this magic? <laughs> this, this, there's a mo- moving car with its own engine. No, it's I, a horseless carriage. <laughs> no, I feel you. It's great. I, I love it. I love having. I wanted to ha- have you in on uh, the show, anyways, and just ended up being, um, you know, I dare I say, perfect timing because uh, I wish we didn't have to have this conversation. But, but yeah, I, I, I looked at the date of, of the pulse shoot and said, holy crap, that's the same time. And I wanted you to come in just to reflect and look. But look at back. The, at the same token. We, you don't want to look back on something horrible, but the fact that we're still talking about it five years later is exactly why that book exists. That's a great point. Great. And I'm going to hold it up again. I'm keep holding this up. And all proceeds still go to still charity. Go. Uh, still go to, the tre- we'll go to the Trevor Project, which is a fantastic, fantastic charity. It's, yeah. a, it's a helpline, a 24-hour helpline for LGBT youth, any, any youth at risk, actually. Yeah. And it's actually named after a short film that Jodie Foster produced called Trevor about a, about a gay teenager that won the Oscar for a short film. That you should check it out. It's a really lovely film. Yeah, but they're are, they're a great, great, great charity. Yeah, put that uh, card up again if you can, Ikeka. Thanks. Uh, we are, from now to the end of June, we'll uh, be donating uh, portions of our proceeds across all shows to the Trevor Project here as well. We just had a great run with the Battle, Battle Buddy Foundation. We're not done working with them, uh, but this just uh, felt uh, the right way to uh, go uh, to the end of the June here at, uh, with with Pride Month and everything and everything in focus. And I think it's okay to, for things to be. Uh, I think it's okay for things to be focused. You know, like like we, we, we ha- you have to remember. Yeah. Because if you don't remember, you get to where we were the past. Yeah. Four years. Because you and I can maybe uh, you know have our Gen X uh, you know smirky uh, when I see Wells Fargo switch their logo, but uh, I also don't think it's bad. I think it's a good thing. It's no, to it, see how far we've come. Absolutely, absolutely. To it's so funny, and and if you really want to check how far we've come, yeah. Watch some of your favorite teen comedies from the eighties. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time how much the F word yes. was thrown. And I'm not talking about the yeah. four-letter one. I'm talking yeah. about the one that begins with F and ends with T yep. and has agate in the middle. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to watch some of these movies. And I'm not I'm not a shrinking violet about that. I mean, yeah. once again, context is everything. Like a John Waters movie is filthy, but contextually it's a yeah, joyful yeah. thing. So that, But you watch... Some of these movies, it just feels arbitrary. Like, try, yeah. and, try and watch Teen Wolf or Monster Squad. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, whoa. Well, it was, uh, and that's when you look back <coughs> just comedy in general, or you look back, uh, comedy should grow, comedy should mature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I've I've experienced that myself in my own comedy in the last two years. Not that I was I wasn't working that mm-hmm. stuff, but it's just like well, comedy can be edgy but not hateful. Yeah. Edgy comedy Com- and hateful comedy are two different things. Comedy has, needs to communicate. It needs to be telling you something. It needs to be needs to be uh, given a point of view and our lessons and our journey. And and I and I, my comedy is switch. And, and and I think it you do comedy. Mark Ellis keeps claiming I'm doing that. And stand by uh, announcement coming today. Uh, you people up in Seattle, get ready. Pour a cup of coffee and get ready for some comedy stylings of Mark Ellis and friends. Wink, coming soon. Um, but even I, I yeah, I've changed because looking back, it's like I, I uh, when I used to do the Schmoes movie news, a lot of that was just, uh, it was harmless, but but also it was just like, it was bitter and it was at something, it was at people, and it, it, it made me work to take joy away as, as opposed to build or tell my story. And looking back at movies, um, uh, uh, gay being a punchline, uh, uh, race being a punchline, uh, again, I'm with you, like context or, uh, you know, we, we're also, we can be stronger people than that. But it just it was it just was ever it, it, it seeped into our water. You well, didn't know it. And there's a difference between using a, a edgy thing and being a smart comedian. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Chris yeah. Rock uses the N word all the time. Right. And you're like, oh, I, I get it. It's not there just to be shocking. It's there. It, once again, yeah, yeah. it's context. Context. And communication, it's context yeah. is everything. And I like a dir- good, dirty joke as much as anybody else. But that once again, once again, it depends on who's telling the joke, when it's being told, 
who yes. you know and that sort of thing and it, it's just it, it's just those are I, for me the thing that's the most depressing about those 80s comedies is it's just lazy writing it's just yeah it, it's just yeah. It, that's that's what you went with what did you reject yeah. you know for me it's ultimately about there is nothing that is too offensive to say if it's said from the right place and in the right context and yeah. lazy writing just drives me crazy as a writer who you know yes. the, the struggle is real and when you see stuff you're like wait a minute I got notes on this and that got an 85 million dollar budget yeah. What's the? What are the rules? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, no, w- well said. Uh, this is why I wanted you in here. And, and looking back to last year, uh, uh, career-wise, and you, I, I want to talk, talk, uh, talk a little bit about you. I know we can't talk about everything going on in your career, but um, you've had a long, uh, long career as a, a very talented uh, comic book writer and writer of other things as well. But uh, I, I love your work. And, and th- how did the last year? change you as an artist uh did you did you just learn a new hobby and just say f it and we'll come back to it what, what, how did you get through the last year as an artist and um, a creator yes to all of that mm-hmm. um you know the beginning of it was odd mm-hmm. and very much scratching that nuclear war day the day after <laughs> day after you know it's like wow where is everybody i um, started i told mark riley i'm gonna eat his arm I, we're gonna survive <laughs> locking this bunker um, and you know, and and it was it was difficult, but not really. It was difficult. I'm you know I'm a writer. I work from home, so yeah. arguably very little changed in my day to day. But there were things I wasn't allowed to do. Yeah, you know, and the moment you're told you can't do something, I want to go to museums. I want to go do this. Yeah. I want you know, it's like it's crazy. But um, I did it. I I part of the reason why um for the people that follow Schmodown that I had to that I had to retire. Step aside, yeah. Was I'm super super busy right now with with things That's that great. are potentially life changing. And I know that's vague booking, and I hate it as much as anybody else. But, no, but, put that Catholic side. Be well, proud. Uh, uh, the, the NDAs that everyone signs for everything, I think there are snipers outside waiting for me to say the wrong <laughs> syllable. But it's, it's all good. But once again, yeah. there was also the level of conflict there. I have these great things happening seemingly all at once in the midst of hundreds of thousands of people being sick and dying. It was like, am I allowed to enjoy this when this is going on? And we also need to realize it's not an either or. It's not. Yes. You don't need to trade one for the other. Yes. Bad things happen. Good things happen. Adjust accordingly. Two, two weeks into the pandemic, I attended a, a Zoom funeral, and it, it changed. Uh, my I wish it was a funeral for Zoom, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, I, I w- it changed my. It, 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 I don't want to say changed my focus, but like it made this last year real serious for me yeah. to experience that. But at the same time, I had one of the best years creatively. For me, just discovering more about myself as a creator and what I want to do. Uh, we launched this during the middle of it all too, and it, and and I think you're right, and and we can feel guilty about the good, but that just that just lets the bad win. Well, we convince our, we it. convince ourselves we don't deserve good things, and we deserve all the bad things. Mm-hmm. And while I am I, I I do believe that we should be more humble than yeah big. You're allowed to celebrate the good things. You know, as my mother said to me in the height of this, she's like, you've been doing this for 30 years. You're allowed to enjoy it. This isn't, you didn't just yeah. get off the bus and we're given this. Yeah. But when you're, when you're living, your, when you got your own director's commentary, it's my Blu-ray is a bad <laughs> import and the translation is awful <laughs> on the director's commentary. So you try and you try and rationalize things and, yeah. you know, I'm just as, you know, it's crazy. Cause I, I turned 51 in, on Sunday, on Father's yeah. Day. Sexy old and silver at the same time, it's like I feel like I'm 12 years old. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like b- I'm in big. I'm like, this is not my body. <laughs> you know, I'll be Robert Loja with you. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is a great way to uh, hear. And also, by the way, jo- Josh is going to be checking from the road. If someone wants to text him, Mark, but I also want to pull you in as part of the conversation, Mark. Yeah. Uh, without without divulging anything that uh, you may or may not be working on, you have you have had a. Uh, a great career in the sense of uh, you're not living on a mansion in in Hollywood, nor do I think like you, like me. I don't think you would want that. Um, you've had a, you've had a great career already. You you have something that's part of your legacy, but you've got some great things coming. And at you, you said your age, fifty one. Um, how age is this number that hangs over us, it's particularly in Hollywood? Like I said, I, I've been aged out. We, we don't want to get into the details, but at the last place we worked at, to our faces, we're told you're old and you're done. And, and that can hurt, and you can start to believe that. And 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 I th- think in the last year, I've what, seen what that means. Not to interrupt. Yeah, what, no, what, what you're old and you're done means is I don't want to pay you what you're worth. I would rather have three young kids who will work for nothing and have yeah. to fix the job thirteen times than do it right the first time. I 100 percent agree. The short sightedness, America, cut yeah. twice, measure once. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the flip side of that is is here you are in in a, in a 
in a, in a potentially life changing, like you said, and uh, potentially, uh, you know, just a, a, a wonderful new chapter of your career. Um, and to, to get here now, um, that that's the almost the old way of looking at it. For me to even say, oh, you, you, you got there now. There's no now anymore. There's just creating and just taking your shots still. Well, I think we're at a place, too, that the past year has proven that I think the ageism thing is going to be less mm -hmm. because people, you know, are, you know, we are generating stuff from home. And I think that's going to change the whole workplace. It's going to change the whole corporate yeah. real estate. It's going to it's yeah. be really interesting to see how this levels out once we're back to full. But, you know, mm. it's it's one of those things where I always say that being successful in Hollywood has marginally to do with talent. You yeah. just have to be too <laughs> stupid to quit. You know? <laughs> Me is dumb, Mark, and oh. I hope that's true. Oh, that, you know, I'm, that rings true I'm over for me. putting forks into outlets, hoping for a, a, <laughs> you know. So by no means, you know, it, it's about it's about the endurance factor, you know. Yeah. And and much like if you're running a marathon, you're going to get a Charlie horse, and your nipples are going to bleed. Yeah. Get the bomb, eat a banana, and just keep going. <laughs> the nipples are going to bleed. Uh, Riley, I want to bring you in on this conversation yeah. too because. Uh, you and I are about the same age group. We're, we're you know, we're a couple of uh, sports seasons behind in Draco here yeah. in age. But I don't believe that at all. But, but yeah. you and I, <laughs> you and I struggle too of just like, hey, there's things that we didn't try or we can get to, and we still, you know, is 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 it still coming in terms of writing, just specifically about career stuff? Yeah. When you hear Mark at his at his age, right, boy, this age old guy, <laughs> what? What? Eh? what what does that make uh, you think? Oh, it, it, you can keep going. And you can keep that, that rings so true for me, Mark. Uh, the we're too stupid to quit. I just don't yeah. know how to do anything else. I'm not qualified to do anything. I don't want to do anything <laughs> else. So and true. and the writing in particular is like, you know, I just finished a script that I realized. I I went back, and I went. I haven't finished a screenplay since 2011, and I just finished one. And I feel like that's an accomplishment in itself. Whether it gets out there and sold and whatnot is mm -hmm. a whole nother adventure. Yeah, but I, I, it makes me so happy, and it makes me. It, you're never too old. You're never too. It, yeah, age at, doesn't matter. I look at it this way, you know. Look at what happened to River Phoenix mm -hmm. when he had all that success in his twenties, and look at what happened to Anthony Hopkins when he was fifty years old. Correct. Yeah, and I get why young young people become drug addicts or go, go or go nuts when they mm -hmm. have success because in your twenties you don't even know who you are yet, and to be given. Mm. the world and be surrounded by people telling you what you they think you want to hear because they're profiting off of you. Yeah. I get it. Now, would yeah. it have been nice to have been a millionaire at the age of 24 yeah. years old? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to be a hypocrite yeah. about yeah. that. But by the same token, everything I get now feels earned mm -hmm. and I, I have a, has a value to it that might have not happened 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Right. And, you know, once again, I do think, especially from writing, the writing standpoint, writing is a little less ageist. Yeah. Because they don't know who what you look like <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's just a matter of, if you do what you love, eventually you will have some sort of success. Yeah. Whether that's financial, spiritual, yeah, you yeah. know, creatively, whatever, you will have some sort of success. And luckily, as a single gay guy who's a white guy in America, mm -hmm. I got I got all every good check on the bingo card except the gay thing depending on what part of the country you're in, um, <laughs> you know, I I don't I don't have a lot to complain about I don't yeah. have a lot to complain about yeah and it, hey it's fun you and I could complain about the coffee but it, it, it's fun uh, to you know to, what it's free and free trumps everything see there you go Mark found the good Mark found the good and to Riley's point too you know I I think and I got you oh so Josh is not going to be able to call in. <coughs> They're stuck in a storm. That's the he's update. driving in a storm. That's that's. Uh, is he still in Texas? He, uh, I believe so. Yeah, he didn't say. Let me see. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I'll tell yeah, you. One yeah. time on the forty freeway outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico, I hit a I hit a fog bank so bad I thought I was going to die. Oh yeah, coming back from uh, South Carolina uh, yeah. from Eric's, we we were on the t we were beating a hurricane, and that the tail end of us got it, and it is it's yeah. wild. So be safe, Mr. Yeah. Makuga. He and is. He is. They, and I want I, I, a lot of you. Uh, I know a lot of times in the show we we, we talk to, uh, and I know I'm extra far away from Mark. That's that's my fault today because I had the two camera angles. Um, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of your uh, comments and your stuff, too, and great stuff. We've got a super chat to get to, but uh, I'm, I'm not ignoring them. I just uh, see them. It's just a different kind of conversation right now. But uh, Mr. McClunky says, Mark and GPA, thank you for talking about age. It's a small thing, but it helps. 
Our friend Anka Van Doren says, not about how far you are, but how happy you are. I love a lot of this stuff. Uh, thank you so much for being supportive of uh, this conversation today. And uh, the Super Chat, Kingsport Cal says, in Johnson City, Tennessee, went to numerous gay bars. and had the best times ever. I could be myself. Love your work, Andranko. Uh, I uh, really love your Wonder Woman run. And thanks for the uh, Super thank Chat. You. We ought to stream live, too. Well, that's the thing that's funny. You would think that gay bars, straight guys wouldn't like going to them. I have so many straight friends that go to gay bars to watch sports. Because they're like, they're like... I don't have to worry about my girlfriend. I, I won't. If I get hit on, it's good for the ego, and I can <laughs> just watch sports. So, I mean, that's the that's the thing. I love that gay bars are more than about just a place of solace for people who yeah. are homosexual. Yeah, it's a place where you can just be yourself. It's why it's very similar to a comic book convention in the way. Yeah, you know, every time I get yeah. when I get frustrated at a comic book convention, it's like oh, it's so crowded and blah 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 blah. I'll see someone. I'll see someone who you know. One of the one of the fans who might have spina bifida is in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. And they've made their wheelchair into a dragon or a transformer, and they're living. Yeah. This, this is this is Christmas to them, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. My pro. This comes from a place of joy and community, and that's why that's why so much of, so much of the toxicity of fandom drives me crazy because it, this is a place yes. that I grew up in yes. where it was like, I want I want to invite everyone to the party. I don't have any. You can like stuff I don't like. You know. You know. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Right. But I don't like avocados either. That doesn't mean I don't want them to exist. That's another thing we need to realize. Things I, you don't like aren't necessarily bad. Okay, can you throw out those avocados I brought in for Mark today? <laughs> can you throw those in? Um, I'm the only person in California that does not like avocados. <laughs> uh, little Ohio still in you, I guess. Uh, uh, this is wonderful. Um, I, uh, I did, uh, I've had a very blessed, privileged life, to be clear. But I was talking with Grace and I were having a conversation this well, week. Well, there you go. There, there, there's your privilege right there, Grace. Grace, Woo! absolutely. Or, uh, it took me a long time to get it right. But I, I was talking about, uh, again, I, I want to put a perspective in my story here, mm -hmm. but uh, um, we were talking about my collectibles and the things about you know my life and, and what they mean to me. And I said, look, in, in, in the 80s, um, there was a kid in school, uh, Joe, uh, I could say his full name, used to come up from behind me, choke me to the point of I'd go blurry and lose my vision, mm -hmm. call me a nerd, call me the, the F word you were mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about, uh, because that was... Um, that was another example, and of, we ne we none of us knew what it meant. We no, just we, we knew just it was it. we knew it was bad. Bad, and yeah, and that was the connection. We're like, oh, you like nerd things. I used to wear a Return of the Jedi shirt, and he choked me to the point of passing out. And and you know, no teacher there to help, no other kids, all the other kids running away because why would you? Big, and he would go on to well, play the football team. I'm a firm believer in saying that it would have been it would have been easier to be out as a gay kid in Ohio in the '80s than it was to be a comic book reader. Yeah, there, there's some there's that, some truth that, to that. That that uh, <laughs> is not that is not hyperbole. Yeah, um, and from that point, and then along the way to to where I had friends come over to my house, you got to take this stuff down, or no woman will ever want to be with you. I had a woman tell me to my face. That's why I put all that stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Um, but anyways, all I to say, not to tell my sad story, but to where I am now, where I. I, I, I can pay some bills talking about Star Wars. I can come here and have fun. Mark and I can, uh, at, at our age, enjoy these things. You can not just write comics, but enjoy the culture and what you're talking about going to these conventions. That's why I love them, because you go around, and it is that free space. Well, I also, love people being themselves. It's also about, regardless of whether it's comic books or anything, passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm at a party, and you're a mortician, and I don't know you, and you love your job, I want to talk to you. Right. Because passion is so attractive. You realize how lucky we are. You know, we don't have private jets and any of that sort of stuff. Yet. The Yet. Shopping at the dented can store. But we get to do what we get to wake up and do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's such a privilege. And I always, you know, I've, I've said ad nauseum that most of the world looks like we're in the Polar Express. <laughs> they look like people. They kind of act kinda. like people. But there's this uncanniness, this uncanny valley and this dead inside. Right. I don't care if you're a garbage man or the president of the United States or the PTA chair. If you love what you do, you're interest, you're instantly fascinating to me because it makes me sad how many people, mm. by circumstance or by choice, give up on their dreams. And and my dad did. It, 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 you know. My dad and, did. and once again, your dreams doesn't have, don't have to be my dreams. I have friends that I went to college with who are some of the best actors in the world, and they just don't like auditioning. Yeah. So they're doing something else, or they'll do, or they'll scratch that itch in community theater. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy, it doesn't have to be my happy. Mm -hmm. I just want people to be happy. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. I love living in this area. Well, most people. Most. 
<laughs> there's a there's a couple. There's a, hey, it's okay. We all we all got to work through it. <laughs> we all got to work through it. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with all the stuff you're saying here. This is why I wanted to bring a Mark in today for the positive report. Um, so with with Josh not calling, we don't we don't have any videos to make a smile because we thought Josh was going to be calling in. So. Uh, okay. Mark, can you dance or something? Uh, I can sure dance. I can dance uh, while I'm seeing the stream last <laughs> here real quick. Yeah, uh, hit me. Brendan you, Truitt. You can dance if you want to. I can dance if you. I, I understand you, that reference. That's how old leave, I am. Don't leave your face uh, Brendan Truitt in uh, Streamlabs here, streamlabs.com slash goodpeoplegpa. Thank you for this. Mark is the best, and I'm happy to support another great cause this month. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love this community. Brandon, thank you thank so you, much Brandon. for that. We really love it. Uh, yeah, and again, for those just joining the show, Mark Andrico here. We're looking back at his uh, charity anthology, Love is Love, which, uh, of course, was uh, in response to the Pulse well, nightclub if shooting I, if five If I can years put an ago. asterisk in there. Yeah. Saying his makes it me feel like it's about me, and I'm being, I'm being, I'm being a little precious right, about it. There's a lot of names. No, I'm not, I'm, not, names. I'm not correcting you, but I wanted to be said that I was the impetus for it. Well, the, yeah. the event was the impetus for it. This could not have been done, even with my goofy idea, without... The, oh, the, the the volunteering of talent and time and resources. Absolutely. So I might be the guy that organ that opened the door, but there are so many people that made this book come to life. I agree with that fully. And uh, the one the lists uh, of names, uh, not just impressive, but uh, important, but also, yeah, I also want to make sure to give you the credit. You re you went through the door and said, I've got an idea. Take hey, the compliment, Mark. You, th these names this is awesome. These names might not mean a lot to the average mm -hmm. viewer, but Jamie Rich and Sarah Gatos, who were the, the co-editors of mm -hmm. the book, are the ones that really made that book happen because... Right. I could call all my friends in the Rolodex and say, hey, draw something, write something. They were the ones that chased people and made this book come to life. So Which even though those are names you might not know, they are two of the best people I know and two of the best editors in comics. I, I know what you mean. Uh, we take all the credit here, but really, Kaika is the only reason we have shows every day. If he doesn't yeah. press the buttons right, <laughs> and, he does, and he does this drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. You noticed. I wasn't, I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, Ikaka? Sometimes <laughs> it's like it's like uh, Ginger Rogers backwards in high heels. He runs the soundboard drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. Oh, uh, this is why Mark is here. Uh, so uh, happy to talk to you here. Uh, no, it's Mark. nice to see you guys. You yeah, know, it's finally good to see those, you. you know, yeah. all this. Time. We I, we actually like each other off camera, which yeah, is a thing. We you know? do. I'm so glad I got over my fear of you. I always joke about it. I've I've said about the Netflix <laughs> files and everything. It just was. Uh, it was so weird. You were the one I was scared of. Like Monday, I was didn't know what to think of Monday and our now good friends. But you, I was legitimately scared of. Same. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I think I was well, on movie fights with you, yeah. and I, I um, you, you, you mopped the floor with me. I would say that from a visual standpoint, uh, character-wise, me and Monday are probably pinky in the brain. <laughs> it's so true. He's out there in uh, Houston. Uh, 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 agreeing uh, in spirit. Um, so, from if from you're listening, Nick, we love you. We miss you. Hope you're doing well. I'll send him the clip. He is doing. He is doing well. Last time I talked to him, it's been a couple weeks. But I'll give him a. We always chat. Nick Mundy is the last human on Earth that I know of that refuses to text you or email you. He'll call you, and he won't stop until you answer. If he wants to talk to you, well, which is actually a company. don't give him my number. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> I will not. Uh, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, and and you, Mark uh, and Draco, we got two Marks here today. You walked yeah. in. You were like, this is smaller than I thought. But uh, <laughs> I love I hear that so often. <laughs> Ding! Um, I'll be here all night, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, he'll be in Seattle with uh, Ellis and I. Uh, no. The show will seem so much better when I open. <laughs> That's, that's why we're there. That's generally That's why Ellis brings me around. He's like, great. You go up and kind of... Luke warmly entertained the crowd, and I'll come up and clean the I'll clean the show up. Um, no, I actually love when you walked in. You're like, this studio looks smaller than you guys shoot it. I I actually I love that because that means yeah. I think we're doing something. Right. No, the studio is great. The studio is great. When I said that it was smaller than I thought, it wasn't an insult. I was like, because the no, way the way it's shot, it feels cavernous and epic, and it's it's. The, illu the illusion of the cameras. I mean, no, it's, you know, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Yeah. I mean, we, you know, underneath there. there's some, you know, a yeah. Jedi. Ikaika, it looks like Ikaika. Do you have your camera up and running today? It looks it looks like uh, Ikaika's uh, like four miles away. He's actually currently sitting on my lap. Yeah, there he is. He's actually he's, on my he's lap. He's under the table. Yeah, he's under the table. 
<laughs> Under the table and dreaming. Yeah, there you go. That's why the Wea Kaika started. Uh, so uh, we're about to, to, to the end of our show here. I want to thank you all for listening and letting us have uh, maybe a, a deeper conversation at times. Uh, we also have some uh, fun stuff, silly stuff. I really was hoping Josh was able to call in. We we're going to do some road shows. I was hoping. Yeah. Any viewer questions or anything? Um, yeah, there, I got there's a some coming through. Here. Yeah, go for it. Go I got on. a stream lab here from Popcorn. Thank you for this, as always. He says, mm-hmm. hi, Riley. Riley uh, what is the one true correct spelling of the names Mark and Sean? Oh yeah, this is uh, this is a this is a battle. We got that a I've K. Had we got a K and a C. We got a K and a C. This is a, this is my never-ending battle with Starbucks. Yeah, the, you know, they, it's, I they sometimes you get a C? C. I get a C a lot. What Starbucks are you going to? I, the, the, lately, Orange Cause, County. Because I got to imagine you always get a K. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Is your is your C short? Are you are you a Marco? It's just Mark. Yeah, yeah. just Mark. Which people assume Mark with a C that I'm either Jewish and or French. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. I refer okay. to myself as Jewish adjacent. Yeah, that okay. works. Okay, and now Sean. Yeah. Spelled here as S H A U N. Depends. Reminds on me of uh, of the dead. Mm-hmm. You know the the that version. It but depends. I have a friend. I have S-H-W-N. a scene. I have a scene. I my, one of my good friends from and then school S- is a scene. A scene. And Sean, yeah. and that's the to me the correct spelling because de- of that. It depends on the person. Yeah. That, the, with Sean, the spelling matches the personality of the. That's so true. That's very true. Because my sh- the my friend Sean with an A W N. Let me, is yeah. distinctly different personality-wise than E-A-N or A-U-N. Okay, I want, I want to test this theory. I have a Sean, S-H-A-W-N uh, as well. Yeah. T- tell me about this friend, and we'll, we'll compare notes. Um, just like a guy. You just should, like just a guy's just a, guy? A good, just like a good stand-up human being American man. Just like a really good, like a yeah. like a dad or a Cub Scout leader or a, okay. a, a science teacher. Just a really like a yeah. This is not my friend, Sean. No. Okay. <laughs> like a Henry Cavill, but like at the at the gym class. Oh, wait, what? How's your Henry Cavill? Yeah. <laughs> I, was trying, I was just trying to. Give, I was trying to give you the vapors. <laughs> That is my. I think that's one of my favorite. So things. Can, can can you explain to me the show The Witcher is about a guy who takes baths a lot, right? I think that was the pitch. Okay, if, if Twitter's. Any yeah. indication, uh, and Twitter's yeah. usually correct. And 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 really, I realize now that as a man in the end stages of his life on the planet, <laughs> joking about Henry Cavill has now become officially creepy. <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're still good because years. not going to stop. I, I understand. But it's creepy. I'm a Superman guy, <laughs> and I mean, you know, I look at Henry Cavill. I'm like, that's some good looking man. Yeah, I can you get imagine, it. Can you imagine like if Henry Cavill and like Zoe Kravitz had a child? It would be either the Christ child or it would be the sum of all evil flaws. <laughs> there'd, there'd be no, there's not going to be an average looking kid from the two of them. Uh, it's either going to be God or the recessive it, genes. Exactly. <laughs> I think they would float immediately to heaven and save us all. Yeah. Uh, what about your Sean friend? What, your, your, your... My, my Sean friend is a, is a uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's working right now. And he's, mm. uh, he's, a, he's a surfer. He's like the, the quintessential rock. He, he's in a mm. band. He just does it all, and and that's that tracks. Okay. It's yeah, it tracks, and uh, and but he just doesn't want to meet up ever. He's like kind of flaky. If you're watching Sean, yeah, <laughs> I know what you're doing. Stefan uh, in chat says my son is Sean S H A W N, uh, and then uh, Lenore Dixon says my cousin's name is spelled Shun, like S H U N, but Sean. See, there you go. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 it's too early in the morning. It's too early for that. Uh, Super Jack coming in from Galen Shumway says, "Just want to thank you for your Castlevania run, Mark." Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Why? Wow. What's that reaction? What is that reaction? Wow. You got I, I guess I got to renew that restraining order. <laughs> what What makes you say that about the Castlevania? Oh, that's very. That's very funny. That's someone who who's a, fa- a fan. A de- like someone a fan. who's a fan more than a than fan. I am a fan of deep myself. Cut. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was the that was the first comic book I wrote for IDW. How long? How long yeah. ago? How long ago? Twenty-two years ago. That's Twenty-one great. years ago. Wow. Yeah, right that's amazing. I was, I was in the womb writing comic books. Yeah, when we, I, I know we, I remember talking about this a little bit about you on the, my, my old knapsack file show, but. Were you that kid? Were you that kid drawing comics? Uh, I tried, you know, yeah, you know? and I have just enough artistic ability that I know I'm not great. Gotcha. But it's the stories, though, that you're yeah. trying to get around. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Matt the Beard Man, who is Matt with two T, says, I met a Matt once that spelled with one T. I automatically told him he was wrong. Thanks for the great show today. Was, was, <laughs> he, was he laying outside your front door? <laughs> hey. Ba-dum-bum. Hey, all right. Yep. Uh, no, that works. You know, I got uh, my pal Michelle Boyd. She's Michelle with one L. 
from birth. That's the way it was. I love it. Uh, and then Brian Ward, the great Brian Ward is in chat, and he says definitely Brian because he's B-R-Y-A-N. He says mm-hmm. that one is greater than the regular Brian. That right, I even say regular, but the one that's most known. So there you go. We, we, we went to it. Solving the important Solving problems of the, the day. Important. See, this is what we do here at the Positive Report. We go the way from the important issues all the way to the real important issues, how to actually spell your name. And That's before right. we're done, I do got to say, it is mm-hmm. lovely to see you guys. And this is. is such a great, great undertaking you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Because it is so, it is, it is easy to be angry and mm-hmm. mean and cynical. And you can be snarky and stuff, but this is, it, it, it's much easier to be pleasant. And circling back to love is love, the one thing the, the takeaway from that for me is just try and be nice to one stranger a day and try and learn one new thing every day. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be huge. It can be letting someone in traffic, holding a door. It could be learning a new word. But that alone will make you a better person. You know what you just did? You closed the show in the most beautiful way, yeah. uh, building on stuff Josh says every day. Uh, choose positivity, choose uh, love, and and I love what you're saying, Mark. So thank you so much for coming on in. Uh, again, follow Mark at Mark Andreco. He'll do, have some big announcements one day soon. Also, again, Love is Love is still out there. in the eight, It's eighth printing, you said? Eighth or ninth. And eighth. also, too, if you aren't near a local comic book store, uh, the digital version on Amazon.com. Oh, right has about 25 pages of extra material that we couldn't fit into the book. There so go. there's some big-name stuff that is available digital only. So that all that money, too, also goes all to charity. Check it out. Get it. Uh, support this cause. Uh, funds are going to the Trevor Project now with this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with us as well here from now until the end of June uh, here at the GPA, uh, portions of all proceeds for every show will go directly to the Trevor Project. Saving young LGBTQ lives. Go to the trevorproject.org for more. Uh, we have got uh, a special show tomorrow. Josh will still be out. We'll see if he'll call, see if he'll call in. I've got uh, Phil Svitek, a uh, podcaster filmmaker he's a 360 creative coach and he's coming in here we're gonna have some fun we're gonna talk about the effects of having a positive mindset he's got some fun stuff about that plus he's got a project i hope he can talk about it. it's pretty cool i talked to him about it yesterday that is also about chasing your dreams your passions and just putting it out there i want to do well, a new show on your network called the vague show where you just have people this. come in and use pronouns to talk about everything they're doing but have just, no specifics we'll call it the nda hour yeah, yeah. Go Go picture. gpa nda <laughs> gpa presents the nda hour host mark andreco maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so that's tomorrow 9 a.m riley's cantina tomorrow at yes, 4 sir. 4 p.m pacific koi john drew is coming in Koi-Jandru's to the show coming he's coming in here he's ready for the the boons bourbon he is ready oh, to go. Throw up that sponsor card for our too. sponsor. I nice was little. so focused on the coffee. Forgot to remind you that every show here at the GPA is brought to you by Boone's Bourbon, homegrown Boone's Bourbon from Americana singer songwriter Tyler Boone. Official sponsor of the GPA. Go to drinkboonsbourbon.com for more. We had a lot of fun with them. Uh, Josh specifically at the Jam in the Van. Uh, Tyler and his crew. Uh, Tyler actually is going to be in. I think on Friday. In studio, uh, hopefully Mark Ellis come back too. And again, uh, Mark Ellis and I going to be doing some comedy up in Seattle, July 24th. Details might even be on the internet right now. If Mark tweeted out that photo, I thought I saw him do. And Brian Ward is working. Brian Ward wrote an e- wrote me an email last night. Says need some pictures of you. I said finally. Brian asked yes. for some pictures of me. Uh, so that is it. Uh, to all of you in chat, thank you for being supportive. Thank you for your streamlabs, super chats, and all those things. And uh, uh, tell people what we're doing here. Uh, if you're on board, if you're a member at the GPA.fun, where you can go to join up, become a member, get merch, all that good stuff. Tell a friend. Tell uh, tell everyone what we're doing here so we can continue to grow the brand. We'll see it tomorrow, my friends. Be positive.